I think one of the biggest ones has got to be if, if you receive a session done in Studio One from somebody else, maybe they have a, you know, a 32, or maybe they have a Studio 192, or maybe they have a Quantum, or maybe they have the Apollo. You get a session, you're collaborating. The first thing that happens is you get an I.O. configuration that doesn't make any sense to you. Right. So It's their I.O. It's their I.O. Yeah. And Studio One is smart, and it auto-maps you know, the main outs, at least, so you can get working. But one of the things that we've needed for a long time is the ability to be able to store, recall, import, export the I.O. configurations, mm -hmm. right? So now if we head into the I.O. setup, you'll notice here we have some new features. So we have import. So check this out here. I've got some I.O. configurations that I've set up. So I mean, in my studios, I have, I've got a Quantum 2 as my mobile rig. I've also got an Apollo Twin Mark 2. I've got a Quantum full size. And then I've got a, a big setup with a Quantum and a 4848. Those are a lot of different I.O. configurations. So now, once I have a session and I've, I've created one, I can just export this and save it. We have a new folder, I.O. configurations. Mm. So as you would expect, we can import an I.O. configuration, or we can export a current configuration. Or if this came to me and it was somebody else's I.O., if I've saved a default I.O. configuration. So, you know, when you, you, you've saved default and that's your main mm -hmm. rig that your you're main working rig, with. Right. We have the ability to just reset the default. So at any given point of time, we can reset the default, apply, and now this has created my default I.O. setup. Mm. So a couple other changes here. We now have colors. I mean, this is kind of a simple thing, but it, it, it makes a difference when you want to separate your inputs and outputs. So we can assign colors. Uh, a, a big one is we have the ability to add multiple channels at yeah. once. Yeah, I like that feature. So instead of just adding add mono or add stereo, we can say like, okay, well, let's create our channel label. So I could say ADAT, and then I could select the channel format, and I could select the number of channels that I want, and I could select, for example, I could even select the channel count, click and OK. And color too. And now I've just created, it's auto-named them. That's a great feature. It's auto-colored them. So now if we click Apply and OK, and we come to our inputs, now on our input side, I've just added all of those. Mm, that's nice. So while we're talking about this, check this out. This is a big change on the input side. See what we have here. So, oh, wow. So you guys know with Studio One, you've always been able to put plugins on your inputs. So anything that you're recording, you could record through native plugins that have zero latency or third-party plugins that have zero latency. Not only can we do that now, but we can also do things like, for example, I can invert the polarity of right. a channel. So let's say snare top and snare bottom or something like that. If you don't have that invert phase on a preamp control, we can do this in the software domain. That's right. so killer. So this is on every single input all the time. Every single input all the time. And not only that, but we can also trim. That's a really important one. Yeah, so how, Gary, how would you use something like this as far as the trim? Control. Well, uh, like Marcus and I spoke about it earlier, if, say, you're running a, a, a pre or something, you, you run it in hot because you want it a certain tone. Yes. Now you can run it hot and then turn down the input here and still get that tone without overdriving the input to your interface. Right. So, so basically when you're setting up your gain structure, right. you know, you don't, you're not going to have these wildly different gain, yeah, right. gain coming in. To the DAW. So you could saturate an ADL yeah, 600, right. get a nice crunchy tone, or an RC 500, or a Neve, or anything that you're right. using, and then just dial say, it back all right, I need bit. to dial this back minus 10. And then yeah. I'm coming in with my peak at minus 15 or minus 12, that, which is whatever way that you want to work. That's so cool. So you no longer have to like overcook it and then bring it down with event gain. And, and this, this is one of the, the biggest requested features and you know one of many that we've added in this release of just being able to have it on every input all the time that's so cool and then not only well since they went ahead and did it on the inputs not only do we see it on the inputs but if we click our wrench icon in the console so they've they've done some rearranging in terms of these categories and they've split things up into three separate categories but you'll also see that we have the option for input controls here as well oh so you have mm -hmm. it in the actual mixer. arrangement in the, or yeah, in, in the, the mixer actual rather. channel console. So if you're working with stereo That's tracks, where I use it. which in this case mm -hmm. I am, we, we can we can flip the polarity of either one of these. We can adjust this, and this is happening in real time, but you don't have to uh, render it. Right. So examples of this again: uh, kick in, kick out, snare top, snare bottom. Being able to, for example, flip the polarity on the bottom mic, but then maybe also trim it. 
Maybe I want to yeah. trim it because maybe I want to trim this right down so that I can have my fader resolution up at zero, right? right? So you, you can Give play with these spot. levels. Mm -hmm. And this is like pre-fader, pre-insert. So this mm. is happening before you're hitting all of your plugins. Killer. Also really useful virtual instruments. Every virtual instrument that I use, you, you hit a preset and it's hitting like zero. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, I used to put a mix the red tool immediately. on, right? Yes. I used to put a mix tool on everything and pull it down. That's what I used to do too, but now it's there. I don't have to do it anymore. Now we have this. You, you pull it back, you trim that back. So this is, this is a major, major improvement in terms of how you can workflow. And this is going to replace mix tool for a lot of people. Right. Sure. And then, of course, if you render any audio tracks or instrument channels, this all gets maintained and it works as it's, as it's supposed to. But it's a huge time saver in terms of gain staging and, and, and stuff like that.